Hello again, pilots. This is Hobbs here, and I'm bringing you the Rocketeer. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> but yeah, you can uh, pause here in a little bit. I'm going to show off the mech stats. Come on, stats, where are you? Okay, there's the stats. But yeah, the Rocketeer mech. It's another suppressor mech, kind of similar to the Grenadier, but it does differ slightly, so I will go over how they're different. But yeah, the Rocketeer does actually play it uh, quite differently than the Grenadier, so. Uh, if you've watched my Grenadier video, keep in the mind the suppression stuff I talked about, but as far as how the weapons work, they do work very differently. But yeah, anyways, let's get to it! Okay, so your first questions are probably, what are the main differences between the Rocketeer and the Grenadier? Well, the difference between the Rocketeer and the Grenadier is that the Rocketeer uses rockets. You don't say, Hobbs! I do say so! <laughs> and obviously, uh... There are statistical differences as far as uh, how the mechs perform. The Rocketeer is a little bit slower on the ground. However, it's actually it falls in line with the Berserker and the Bruiser, as in it's it has better aerial dynamics than most of the other mechs in the same class. In fact, uh, the aerial dynamics on the Rocketeer is 30, which is actually better than the aerial dynamics for an assault class a mech. The assault mechs has an aerial dynamics of 29, so the Rocketeer is slightly faster than an assault inside of the air. So keep that in mind. Also, oh, another major difference between the Rocketeer and the Grenadier is that the Grenadier is a little bit better at suppressing uh, targets who tend to stay on the ground the most. And because of the nature of the grenades and how they work, uh, they work better against targets who stay on the ground. The Rocketeer, however, actually works a little bit better against targets who like to be in the air and inside of uh, really open spaces rather than closed spaces. So, Because uh, you can tell like on this map, called, uh, you can see Bunker. Uh, this is a great map for the Rocketeer because, like I said, it's really good at covering open spaces and, uh, you know, places that don't have too much cover. It'll really make people duck behind, have to duck behind hills and really stop their movement, so. Now, the weapons that come standard with the Rocketeer are called the Seeker as the primary weapon, and the secondary weapon is the Hellfire Missiles. And, of course, you, you recognize the Hellfire Missiles from my Bruiser video, if you ever watched that. And, uh, yeah, any tips I gave you on the Hellfire Missiles and, uh... That was in my Bruiser video. If you haven't seen my Bruiser video, go check it out so I don't have to repeat myself with the Hellfire missiles. But as far as like Hellfire arcing and all that, works exactly the same on uh, the uh, Rocketeer. It, you know, just it, they're they're suppression tool more so than a real than a like a killing force. And like you know, and all I said about how uh, you know when shooting without uh, locking on and how to lock on and all that stuff. Refer to my Bruiser video for that so I can save so a little bit of time here. And uh, just really quick, the ability is called Targeting Turret and what it does is that it is, you know, it gives you a frontal damage reduction of 40%. Of course, it comes with the damage penalty of 20% extra damage in the rear, but it also automatically locks on your Hellfires for you. But it's not the most useful thing. I mean, it's good for the damage reduction sometimes if you're on a high point and you're trying to defend an area. That's how I use it. But yeah, the turret mode is very, is a very, very defensive uh, turret mode. Do not try to use it, to, you know, charge into battle like you would with the Vanguard or the. Uh, or even like the brawler. Even in fact, the brawler is not a good idea to use turret mode offensively like that. But yeah, use the uh, the turret defensively when you need to, and from a high point, because otherwise, you know, it's not going to be that useful like inside of combat. Of course, the primary weapons are called the Seeker, and it's pretty much the equivalent, the Rocketeer's equivalent of the Rev GL that the Grenadier has. And so what? But of course, it, it shoots rockets instead of grenades. And what the Seekers do is, well, as they are applied, they actually do have a seeking function to them. And what happens is, like, if you click the, your mouse when you're right on, when it, when your reticule is right on top of an enemy, it'll automatically uh, home in on target. So you can, as you can probably tell, you can just like hold the mouse button down, and it'll keep constantly track targets. However, they do move pretty slow, and uh, you know, at close range, like same thing with the Hellfires, uh, the the tracking really, really doesn't help because people can dodge it a little bit too easily. And so, yeah, the Seekers are very, are kind of weak up close. However, if you keep a mid-range distance, uh, the Seekers and the Hellfires should work very, very well with the Rocketeer. And, of course, like, with the Seekers is that, like I said, uh, as before with the Rev GL, I don't, like, weapons like this, it has very high heat generation as well, so you really want to watch out for your heat, because I think the overheat recovery time on the Rocketeer is about 5 seconds, and you're going to be down for a long time. And it's, as in any heavy mech, overheating really, really sucks. Because you, you're not going to be able to, you know, dodge or run away very, very easily while you're, while you're uh, not able to fight back. So, and of course, how the suppression of the Rocketeer works is like, you know, people who will see uh, Seekers coming, uh, don't don't think that it. it pretty much, if you're going to get kills with Seekers in your head and your Hellfires, it's mainly because those people were kind of too stupid 
and, you know, to duck it undercover because, you know, they had a rocketeer on them. And that's the whole point of the Rocketeers to keep it suppressed. People know that there's a Rocketeer out there and then they don't want to leave cover. You know, they have, they have to make sure they keep pinned, otherwise they're just going to get hit by the barrage of missiles that you just have uh, stored inside of your mech. And, you know. and so, yeah, that's how pretty much how you'd expect to use this Rocketeer. And now, and now as I said before, uh, if I'm actually trying to kill somebody, I don't like to use the full auto mode because of, you know... <laughs> My aim and stuff like that. I usually try my best to, you know, click every single time I want to shoot, and I make sure that my reticule is right on them, and that my missiles will track every single time. However, the Seekers—they're not really my favorite weapon to use on this. I mean, they're pretty easy, but you know, they move a little bit too slowly for me. And uh, uh, yeah, even though they're fairly easy to use, I kind of just don't like the way they are because of the high heat generation and their slow movement speed. Uh, this is, these are not my favorite. However, for a basic Rocketeer, these are the weapons that you're going to want to use because they are the simplest to use and they are pretty damn effective. But, you know, it's only they're only really that effective on maps that are nice and open like Bunker or Last Eco and stuff like that. But uh, then the other next uh, coming up weapons are much, much harder to use, but, you know, they actually have uh, some benefits. But we'll get moving on to those. Okay, so this is the rank 3, uh, not the prestige weapon, the alternate weapon that you can unlock for the Rocketeer. It's called the EOC Repeater. It's my personal favorite weapon in the game. However, it is the hardest weapon in the game to use as well because of just how it works. It fires three uh, pucks, and what the pucks are are proxim or proximity mines. So when people step on it, they, you know, they explode and they deal damage. However, it also charges up so you can fire six pucks at once. And then to even further complicate things, you know, it, it's a mine launcher, so it has a projectile speed, and but it also, you know, it has that charge up mode, and so for most people, it's just very, very complicated to try and use because they they have to lead the pucks, and then they also have to, you know, like the whole charging and whatnot. It's very, very difficult to use, and I'll probably go over more detail when I make my infiltrator video because the EOC repeater is another uh, weapon that's available for the infiltrator, but it's, uh, you know. You know, again, just like the heat cannon, it, the EOC is much more easily learned on so on the infiltrator. So, I'm probably just gonna quickly just I'm gonna go over how it differs from using the seekers on the rocketeer. Now, due to the projectile nature of the uh, the, the EOC and the fact that they don't home in on uh, enemies like they did like the seekers would, uh, the EOC obviously is a little bit better for ground targets. So, how you, you basically how you use the EOC is that the ground is just full of mines, and the skies are just full of your hell Hellfire rockets. And you are going to want a good team to be able to back you up, because like I said, the EOC is very, very hard to use, and you can see me kind of corner poking around here using that weapon, kind of like I would with the heat cannon on my Grenadier, or like, you know, almost like a brawl, like you saw me with the Brawler. And then you also see me dumb firing my Hellfire missiles a little bit more than, uh, I w you see me doing it but then locking on. But, you know, sometimes I lock on for at a distance. Now the EOC, when you do learn how to lead your targets and uh, land the shots, it is very, very powerful at mid-range. Not so much close range because the machine guns will just tear you to pieces and inside of that close proximity. Because the EOC just fires very, very slow compared to like a lot of the other weapons in the game. It, it, even the heat cannon will fire a bit faster. However, like I said, the, the main thing about the EOC that is just truly devastating is the burst damage, is that you can quickly just fire off the six pucks. I mean, if you fully charge your EOC and you get the six pucks loaded and you can land all direct hits, that's 144 damage alone from just the EOC repeater. And so, yeah, you can see where this weapon would just get terrifying to use. And uh, just one little quick note on the EOC repeater is that the pucks do double damage when they when you land direct hits. So on the ground they will do a uh, half the damage that they normally do, but that's still quite a bit of damage. I mean, a uh, puck that lands a direct hit, it's 24 damage, and so uh, each puck will deal about 12 damage. As, you know, if they're just as a mine standing on the ground. You know, you, you can still use the EOC repeater as a mine launcher and like uh, for area of denial. If you know somebody's going to come through and you want to say like, nope, you can't walk here. You know, you just fill the place with mines, and then, you know, unless your enemy's stupid and they don't see the giant glowing balls of death, you know, they're probably not going to walk that way. But like I said, if you're trying to go for killing power, that's where you really got to learn how to land direct hits, even inside of the air. Uh, you know, it, it takes a long time to learn how to land EOC hits against aerial targets. However, it is a skill that you're going to want to use, but, you know, like I said, once you learn the EOC repeater, you can just be really damn deadly. And there's not a lot of other people who use this weapon as well, so... You're not gonna have to, uh, 
it, fortunately you don't have to counter this weapon a lot. However, trying to counter it uh, against a good pilot, a pilot who actually knows what they're doing, can be very, very frustrating because, uh, you know, it's just, you you just don't see it very often. How to kind of cover basic piloting strategy for the Rocketeer again. Uh, remember, because due to the nature of the Hellfires, the Rocketeer is best used at medium range. Because as you can see up close, when I, when I saw that Brawler get close to me, I just ran because I'm not going to be able to compete with a Brawler in that kind of close quarters. Because like I said, the Rocketeer is made for like mid to long range suppression. And then, you know, obviously those are going to be the ranges that it's going to be the most effective at. However, you know... Uh, weapons like the EOC, or like the Heat Cannon, which is the next weapon I'll show you in a little bit. But uh, those weapons will help you out in close ranges at times, but you need to learn how to be able to play peekaboo with the Hellfire missiles and the weapons, and that obviously takes a lot of skill. So for new guys, uh, close range is something you want to avoid inside of your Rocketeer. Because you're probably going to be using the Seekers, and the Seekers are horrible for close range. Because unless you know, unless you really, really know how to lead your targets, because you're not going to be able to use their auto-tracking to hit targets up in close range when you're using the Seekers, but, you know, that's just how it is, I suppose. Keeping all those things in mind, you can pretty much assume that the Rocketeer is almost like a heavy bruiser, and that's kind of how you want to approach it when you play. It's definitely best for uh, mid-range combat, like I said, you really do want to make sure you maintain your distance. If somebody starts getting up close to you, try to back off a little bit, and also stay with your team, because Rocketeers get very overwhelmed. Uh, when they're up against a lot of opponents, because they're meant to suppress po opponents from uh, while they're still, you know, uh, like uh, across the field. They're not meant to suppress people when they're right up in their face. The Rocketeer is going to have a lot of trouble. So, the Rocketeer definitely is a mech where you really want to be able to stick by your team because, you know, it's a suppression mech, and that way you can give them supporting fire, uh, help them out from a little bit of a distance, and, you know, and still be able to, you know, be there as well as a heavy mech, too. Because you want to be able to take some of the aggro off, but don't, uh, like I said, on the front line is not where the Rocketeer belongs. The Rocketeer belongs on the midline, uh, giving, you know, supporting fire from all of its, uh, rockets and whatnot. But yeah, that's kind of like how you do the basic strategy, and also for the EOC repeater, you gotta use it in order to, uh, you know, learn it. That's the best way to learn it. Uh, I can explain as much as I can, but, you know, in the end, unless you practice yourself with it, you're not going to learn how to use it, but... Alright, well, the EOC clip is wrapping up, so we're going to move on to the Prestige weapon in a little bit, so yeah, just hang on tight. Okay, so the Prestige weapon that's unlocked at rank 5 for the Rocketeer is my second favorite weapon in the game, the HEAT CANNON! Yes, I did that again. Now, I will say this is probably a bit uh, my preferred uh, weapon over the Seekers. However, I will say, though, my, the EOC is definitely my favorite because, you know, like I said, it's my favorite weapon in the game, so it's definitely my favorite weapon on the Rocketeer because I... I don't know why. I seem to be able to do better with the EOC than I do with the Heat Cannon on, their, on the Rocketeer because the Rocketeer is kind of clumsy uh, when it comes to, like, you know, on the ground type combat, and so, you know, and the Heat Cannon's a little bit better for, like, when you're on the ground, but yeah. Uh, but as far as how the heat cannon, uh, you know, again, how do you use it is pretty different, so you just gotta learn how to lead your targets, learn how to do, you know, charge versus uncharged and all that. You know, I covered some of this in my Grenadier video, so you can probably go back and watch that. But of course, I will cover the heat cannon more in depth on the Infiltrator video as well. But as far as how it compares to the uh, Seeker Rocketeer, is that, you know, I like it much more because I can, you know, deal direct impacts. The heat cannon fires, a, you know, the projectiles go a bit faster. Even if they don't have auto tracking, I like the splash damage on them a little bit more. And I like that they actually go where I shoot them and they can actually get there quickly. And plus, like, when I charge my heat cannon, you know, it's like a sniper shot, pretty much. Uh, it's, it's an explosive sniper shot if I charge my heat cannon, so that's why I really like it. So I can definitely pick off a... Uh, a weakened target with my heat cannon. And, you know, you could use the Hellfires for that, but again, the Hellfires move really, really slow. The heat cannon, when you charge it up, just, you know, it's almost it's almost like a hit scan weapon. But it, you know, not not quite, but, you know, it still moves really damn fast. And, you know, like I said, it's like it's a tank cannon crossed with a rocket launcher, so that's why I like it, the heat cannon. However, you know, uh, but compared to the Seekers, you got a bit more burst damage than sustained damage that you do with the Seekers. So, you know, corner play and a peekaboo, it helps a little bit with the heat cannon. And of course, you know, like I said, it takes a lot of getting used to. So, if you're really feeling confident and you learn the heat cannon, then you can try to go for this weapon on the rocket here. However, I will tell you this right now, it is very difficult. But again, most people aren't going to be able to counter this because, you know, people aren't used to seeing people with the heat cannon on. 
Now, of course, the other main differences between the uh, Heat Cannon and uh, v versus like the Seeker and the EOC is that the Seeker and the EOC do have a lot more suppressive power to them versus killing power. And they, like I said, the same thing with the Grenadier. The Heat Cannon does have a bit more killing power to it. However, on the Rocketeer, it's a little bit awkward because, you know, Heat Cannon, it's best, I'd say, is for close to mid-range. However, the Hellfire Rockets are like for mid to long range. And so it's kind of like having the Point D Vulcan on the Bruiser. It's a really awkward combination. And unless you know how to make it work right, it's just gonna feel a little weird. I, like I said, I even I learned the key cannon a little bit better than the, I did the EOC. And however, on the Rocketeer, it, it still just feels a little funky to me as far as the heat cannon goes. But you know, like I said, uh, if you like the heat cannon, then you can go try it on the Rocketeer. I definitely do like it because it does give me a bit more viability in combat when I get up close. You know, in case somebody's trying to close in on me, I can you know fend them off with my heat cannon and deal some serious damage to them. And also still have some suppressive power with it. You know, and get in and uh, land a few uh, sniper shots with the, the charged heat cannon. That's what I like it for. But yeah, and uh, I'm probably just yeah. Th that's it for all the weapons. I'm probably gonna go over a little bit more of the basic strategy of the Rocketeer. Now, like the Bruiser and the Berserker, the uh, Rocketeer has very good aerial dynamics for its weight class. So uh, compared to the other C classes, you can feel free to take it to the skies a little bit more than you would normally like but like I said how I always say in my videos don't try to linger in the air for too long when you're uh, flying because you know you're just acting to get shot however the Rocketeer can stay in the air a little bit longer because of its huge fuel tank and also you know it's got more health so you're a little bit less danger but like I said whenever you stick yourself way out in the open as you do when you fly, you know, that's always a risky situation because, you know, being out in the open is always has its disadvantages versus being to cover. Just And just remember not to get reckless inside of the Rocketeer and just, you know, fly around everywhere, try to fly around people's heads. I mean, yes, you have good aerial dynamics, but of course your aerial dynamics are not going to be like a Berserker, so you're not going to really be able to jump over people's heads and, you know, uh, you know, buzz around them. Unless maybe it's another C-Class, then maybe you can pull it off if you really know what you're doing, but... If you're watching this tutorial video, I'm guessing you're uh, new to the whole Rocketeer business, so you're probably not going to be able to do that. So, you know, just remember, try to stay to the ground when you can, but if you need to, you can take to the skies without having to worry too much about losing your uh, speed and uh, maneuverability. So, that, that's the nice thing about the Rocketeer. And of course, as always, to wrap things up, I'm just going to go over my items and internals really quickly. Uh, as far as items, still the shield, still the repair charge, and of course I told you guys in my last video with the Grenadier that I'm also going to be adding the detonator just in case, you know, for some situations where I need to, you know, increase my damage output just by a little bit just so I can, you know, survive. But yeah, those are pretty much the items, because like I said, uh, dueling with the shield, and I will actually uh, release a video eventually of showing you how to duel with shields, and I'll actually get a, f a friend of mine to help me out with that. But yeah, and then the repair charges, obviously, I mean, you know, it's a quick health kit on the go, so it's never a bad decision. And then, of course, my internal setup will be is uh, the basic deflectors, you know, dodging and boosting forward. I get 10% uh, extra damage resistance when I'm doing any of those things, which you should be boosting and dodging with, uh, when you can. And uh, as also the evasive device, which really helps because sometimes, you know, you get that speed boost when your health is low. And so, you know, it can really help, you know, me to get away or, you know, if I'm in the middle of a fight, I can, you know, I get a little bit of a speed boost. And it does help with the uh, uh, corner play because you're, if you have a faster speed boost, you can actually dodge further than you normally would. And of course, the air compressor, because like I said, the Rocketeer has good aerial dynamics on it. So, you know, air compressor is something you can put on there because you see me use it quite a lot. You see me doing air dodges. But yeah. That was the Rocketeer, uh, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. Again, you know, like, comment, subscribe if you guys liked it. I really hope this helped you learn the Rocketeer. The next video I'm probably going to do is the G2 Assault, so I can get that out of the way. But yeah, this is Soldier Hobbs signing off.